What's more fun than a basket full of Labradoodle puppies? Today's video is the litter update for these three week old mini Australian Labradoodle puppies. Hi, I'm Claire from Van Nuyle Labradoodles and today we are doing the sweet pea litter update. So we're going to give you a bit of information about each of the individual chocolate Labradoodle puppies we have here. We're going to tell you a bit about their mama Ripple who's just going to take herself out of the nest there because she's done with feeding the babies. And we're just going to give you an overview of the litter as a whole. So these puppies are three weeks old and they are all chocolate in some form or another. Everybody has a different pattern. There's only two that are actually uh, the same. Otherwise, everybody's different. And this litter now has both their eyes and their ears open. So that's the big excitement for this litter over the past week is that all of their ears are now open. It's so much fun now to listen to them. Already Gray Collar Boy has started barking. Uh, today we had a delivery come in and he was able to hear that the front door was opening and somebody was there. The delivery truck's backup uh, sound was going and so he gave one of his very ferocious little puppy barks. Uh, the delivery man wasn't scared away. So they're starting to make all sorts of sounds like that. They'll also talk to us a little bit now when we come into the room, they acknowledge our presence, they cry and ask for mom. And last night we had a first that has ever happened with any of our Labradoodle litters. Uh, Reynolds and I were uh, watching the news and, or actually I think we were still having dinner, and we could hear this sound like a howling wolf. And we heard it a few times. And so I went in to see, we knew it was the puppies. So I went in to see what these little Labradoodles were up to. And there's all six of them sitting in the maternity ward. And they're all looking at each other and they've got their heads back, a couple of them, and they're actually howling. Now, why were they doing that? Because they wanted Ripple. Ripple and I are very closely bonded and so she likes to be where I am all the time. So when we're having dinner or if we're watching the news, she'll come and sit either on my lap or right at my feet. So she was right with me and the puppies were a little annoyed at that and thought it was time for her to come and give them something to eat. So they <laughs> had this really innovative approach by doing this howling. Ripple totally ignored it, but uh, Reynold and I were really intrigued and rushed in to see what was going on. They were, of course, perfectly fine, but it was really fun. We've, I've never heard a Labradoodle actually howl before. So as soon as Ripple got in and, and fed them, they were all quite happy and content. But they are using their voices lots. Uh, they can hear everything that's going on. So we have the doors open all the time for the litter now so that they can hear everything that's happening in our household. So already they're starting on their noise desensitization. So they hear the vacuum, they hear voices, they hear the television. Uh, if we have music playing, they hear that. Uh, they hear us talking back and forth to one another from one end of the house to the other. Uh, they hear the other dogs. So they're getting lots and lots of stimulation in terms of sound. Now their eyesight still isn't terrific, but they are able to recognize that it's a person coming in. They can track our movements, but that's about all they can see. Uh, they can't distinguish between whether it's me or it's Reynold other than through our scent. And they definitely know which one of, it, of, of us it is through our different scents. And that's their major accomplishment. And because they are also getting up on their all fours now, you can see them walking around quite a bit in the bed here today. They're much more coordinated, they're much more agile, and that means they're really quite mobile. This is a really uneven and soft surface for them, so this is very challenging for them to negotiate. However, you can see they're not having too many problems negotiating it, and uh, Gray Collar Boy is trying to escape and find his mom. So what we've done is we've changed their setup today. Uh, Reynolds took out the, uh, their whelping box that they were born in and we've set up an area that's about twice as big. They have pee pads everywhere because they're now starting to go to the bathroom on their own regularly rather than just uh, with Ripple's help. And so we have pee pads everywhere and we have given them two beds to sleep in. 
So they're enjoying the beds and uh, we don't have one of these donut beds quite yet because you can see the sides quite high. So this is a little bit too much for them to negotiate at this age. So we have a, a lower plush bed that they can get in and out of. So far they like sleeping under the bed just as much as they do in the bed. And a couple of times they've gotten in behind one of the beds and then been a little confused about how to extricate themselves from that, but they have all figured it out. They are good problem solvers, this litter. Uh, they're very good. They're all really quite independent and they're all very good at figuring out solutions to their problems, such as howling when your mom's not there. As for Ripple, she's doing great. She's spending more and more time away from them. Uh, she's still sleeping with them at night. Uh, next week, we will uh, leave the doors open at night so she can come back and sleep in bed with us and go back and forth between our room and the puppy's room. And uh, she'll probably start to wean them on her own, I would guess, probably shortly after four weeks. We will be introducing solid food to the litter coming up in this next week uh, as she starts to decide that she wishes to spend less time feeding them. She likes playing with them. She really enjoys their company. She's just feeling that uh, yeah, it's getting closer to the time where she's not interested in having to feed them all the time. She eats a ton. She's eating about uh, oh, close to four pounds of raw a day. Uh, plus she has her special lactation formula that she's eating as well. Uh, so she gets massive amounts of calories. Um, but she does have tons of energy and she does like to chase the ball a lot. So we could take her out at least three times a day and she has time running around chasing the ball, which is her passion. And I think she much prefers playing ball than actually playing mom. So, but that's Ripple. And now, how about if we get to go through each of the individual puppies and tell you a bit about them. So we'll do them in birth order. And so that means we start with this fellow here, which is Mr. Gray Collar. Mr. Gray Collar, his personality has always been front and center. He's the firstborn. He was a very big puppy when he was born. He is still the biggest puppy in the litter and he now weighs 1.4 kilograms. There are puppies who are six weeks old in Bernadette's litter who weigh less than 1.4 kilograms. So this guy is not hurting in terms of groceries and he is one heck of a sturdy boy. This little guy is very outgoing. He's a very much of a take charge kind of fellow. He leads the way for everything. And he certainly is always quite sure that he is the one who has the prime position at the milk bar. He also doesn't hesitate to tell Ripple off if he feels that she's not providing him with what he wants. It's quite funny to watch. Ripple, of course, just ignores him. He was the first one in the bed and he was the first one to explore the new area. And his favorite thing in the bed is to be totally upside down, just like this. He'll sleep like that. And even if you come and talk to him and you move things around, he still stays upside down. So he is a really calm and relaxed puppy as well as being a really gregarious and outgoing puppy. Confidence is marked all over this puppy. Super confident little fellow. There we go, Mr. Gray. After Mr. Gray Collar, we have, oh yes, and for color wise, uh, if you haven't watched our other videos, Mr. Gray Collar is a chocolate phantom. Now, Ms. Light Blue Collar, she's number two in our litter. Hello, sweetheart. Hi, how you doing? This little lady is also a chocolate phantom, but she's a tri. And by tri, we mean she has three colors. Now, Mr. Gray is also has white on him, but he's not marked as heavily as this little girl is. She has tuxedo style markings, which is the white bib, the white on her face, the white on her paws, and then she has just a small amount around her neck. She's not a true tuxedo, of course, but it's a tuxedo style. This little girl, she's a pretty roly-poly little thing. She's pretty calm. She doesn't worry too much about anything. She just takes it as it comes. If Ripple comes in the bed, and, or into the nest rather, and the only spot that's left is one of the poorer spots way at the top, of the milk bar. She's like, yeah, okay, that's all right. And when that faucet happens to run out, she doesn't get all perturbed and fussed. She just goes and roots around underneath and goes finds one on the other side. She is as well a problem solver, but she's a very calm problem solver. She just takes everything in stride. Nothing really upsets her too much.
And this little girl is coming in as the second heaviest puppy in the litter, and she's 1.32 kilograms. Oh, dude, something just gave you a start there. So she's not very far away from her brother, Mr. Gray Collar. And you can see now that they're not so content to be held and cuddled quite as long as they were previously. That's because they can move around and they want to move around and they just want to show off their independence and get moving. Number three is Mr. Green Collar. Hey, buddy. Mr. Green Collar. Hi. Mr. Green is our gorgeous Caramel Extreme Party. This boy is just a stunning looking boy. Every week we see his color coming in darker and get to appreciate all of those beautiful caramel markings set against that snowy white background. And on his back, he is getting more than the one spot. So when he was born, sorry, are you not comfortable there? How about we do this? When he was born, he just had the one patch here. But he's got another one up here that we can see now. There's another one down here. So they're showing up more and more. And uh, this is really common with a caramel party, whether they're an extreme or not, that the caramel darkens as time goes on. So he's just going to have the prettiest little face when he has these gorgeous dark ears. He's got the lovely color around his eyes. And he's just going to be one handsome fellow. Mr. Green is our quiet boy in the litter. He's very, very reserved. He's not interested at all in having any arguments with anyone. He doesn't push his way around at all. And he just doesn't talk too much at this point. He likes to get up and he likes to stretch his legs. He was really keen on exploring the new bed when we put it in. But other than that, he just keeps to himself and he just goes with the flow. Right, buddy? Yeah. And he's pretty much what I call a middle of the pack guy. Very even keeled. Has a really nice, calm and stable temperament, which I really like to see. And Mr. Green is coming in at 1.1 kilo not kilometers, <laughs> kilograms. So he and Purple Collar are the same weight and they are the two of the smallest in terms of weight in the litter. So that's our little Green Collar man who we'll put over here. Next is our navy blue collar girl. And you can see she is in the classic Labradoodle pose, upside down, showing the world her stomach. I think they all like being upside down so much in this litter even more than normal because they all have such fat bellies. I swear, I've never seen a litter with so many big tummies. Hey, Navy girl. <laughs> oh, yeah, you tell me. Miss Navy girl. Oh, she's got a big yawn. This girl has a lot of personality as well. Now she looks a lot like her mama Ripple. She has the same collar color as her mama Ripple did as a puppy. And she has a lot of Ripple personality. She is extremely talkative and quite interested in having things her way. She thinks that the world revolves around her and really the only thing that matters is Miss Navy Blue Collar Girl. Isn't that right? She has no patience if somebody's in her way and keeping her from the milk bar. So she doesn't hesitate to shove everybody out of the way if she's looking for her spot. She's very resourceful for figuring out how to get the best spot. And she does not hesitate to complain about things. So like just now when I came to pick her up and take her from her nap, she doesn't hesitate to give me a little bit of heck there and go, wah, 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 what do you think you're doing? And she was one of the big howlers of the group when she figured that Mama Ripple was not doing her job. I, I'm pretty sure as a teenager, she's going to be one of those ones that our parents go, oh, I can't wait for these teenage years to be over with. She's a beautiful little girl and she is also quite sweet, but she really does have quite a bit of sassiness to her. And Miss Navy is weighing in at 1.3 kilograms. So she's not too far off from um, Mr. Gray Collar and Miss Light Blue Collar. In fact, she and Miss Light Blue Collar are really virtually essentially the, the same weight. And the next puppy is this one here, Miss Purple Collar. She's the one who's the same weight as Mr. Green Collar, the two uh, lightest puppies in the litter. Hey, handsome, or I guess you're not handsome, you're beautiful, aren't you? Hi, pretty girl. Hi. This little puppy is one of the quieter ones too. She never fusses around. She just is like, okay, this is what's happening. I'm good with that. 
She doesn't talk too much. She likes to look at things and check them out, but she's definitely not the first one to go and try things out. She does very much love being held. She really likes having under her chin scratched, and she is also often upside down. She doesn't have quite as big a belly as her sister, Miss Navy Collar, but she still likes to be upside down. And Miss Purple, she is a party. And the difference between her and Green Collar is she's not an extreme because her body is marked. Yes, yes it is, and beautifully marked at that. So you can see that she has color all over as well as on her tail. Whereas Mr. Green Collar has only color in a couple of spots. It's not as heavily marked as this little lady is. And this little princess, she has her mama's trademark ear where it's half marked and half white. One of my favorite characteristics in Labradoodles. And she is just going to be spectacularly beautiful. So sometimes when people see puppies like this, when they're very young, they think, oh, they have so much white on their face. But what happens as time goes by is this dark color over here, it will move farther over into the head. It will become more pronounced and the white area will not seem anywhere near as much um, as intense an amount of white. If you go on our website and go to the Our Dog section and check out our girl Dottie. Now that's Ripple's daughter from her last litter last year. And Dottie, when she was little, she had uh, all white and then a black patch over one eye. And if you look at her now, you'll see she has quite a bit more of the, of the black on her face, just because that's how I was saying the color comes in. So Little Purple is 1.1 kilograms. Yes, she is. Just doing great and just a little sweetheart. And her almost twin look-alike, our last puppy in the litter, is Miss Yellow Collar. Come here, sweetheart. Miss Yellow Collar is also a chocolate party and she has the most interesting markings on her. She has that nice big wide broad straight down her back and then she has all of her pretty party markings almost completely identical from one side to the other. Almost identical. And then she has lots of pretty color on her tail and on her face. She has a little bit more color than her sister Purple because you can see that her ear on both sides is solid and she has a little bit more of color on top of her head. So same with her, as she matures, this brown will become more predominant than the white. Um, the other puppy you can look, look at in the, our dog section under the retired girls department is Peanut. And Peanut, same thing, when she was younger, she had quite a bit more white showing on her head, uh, whereas now the white is almost completely invisible. These two dogs will have the white visible forever and they will never be as chocolate on their head as Peanut is, but it's the same sort of similar trend that happens. Miss Yellow Collar Girl is very similar to her sister Purple. They hang out together a lot. They're usually sleeping together. She's another one of the more quiet puppies in the litter, fairly reserved at this point in time, doesn't fuss, doesn't make a big production out of things, and certainly is never pushing anyone around at the milk bar. And Miss Yellow Collar it weighs 1.16 kilograms. So just a tad bit more than Mr. Green and Miss Purple do. Yes, they do. Just a little bit. But uh, they are all very, very close. Oh, and if you can see, Miss Purple Collar is giving her friend, her girlfriend, Miss Light Blue Collar, a nice big hug while they sleep together. And you can see right now while Miss Light Blue Collar is upside down, just how big and rotund that belly really is. That's a big fat tummy she's got going there. Now, you, people like to have their puppies plump. We definitely don't want them to be skinny, but we also want to make sure we don't have puppies who are you know, obesely fat. That would not be healthy for the puppies. This is a nice plump puppy. This is not a great big fat puppy. I often refer to them as having these giant tummies, but they are not big, fat, overweight puppies that are eating a bunch of uh, cereals or, or grain products. As I said, Ripple is eating a raw food diet, so this, these puppies get their carbohydrates from fruits and vegetables that are in her diet, as opposed to from uh, inexpensive grains such as corn and something like that. So they're all getting a super nutritious, high-quality diet 
through their mama. And when we do start them eating, then they'll be put onto goat's milk and then they will have some rice. They will eat pablum to start off with. And the main reason we start them off with that is first of all, it's totally innocuous. So with their immature immune and digestive system, super easy for them to digest, really easy for them to have a really nice good poop going on, no problems with diarrhea or constipation, which is something we don't want to run into with puppies and it also is really easy for them to learn to eat because it's really sticky. So when you see our next video, if we do have them going on their pan, which I suspect we will, you'll likely see some puppies that are not quite as spick and span as they are today because what they tend to do is get the pablum all over their faces, all over their legs, their feet, everywhere. And we put pumpkin in with it because pumpkin is a natural probiotic and also a natural digestive aid. The pumpkin, of course, is orange. And uh, so we get lots of orange, icky, sticky stuff all over the puppies. And uh, yeah, they get a little bit messy and a little bit sticky, but it is the easiest way for them to learn how to eat out of a pan and how to start to become independent from mom. So you can see how they are spread out quite a bit here in the bed. And this is quite different from what you saw last week. Last week they were all clumped together and they were much more uh, at an infant stage where they required that security of always being very close to one another. Now they are still all touching at some point, but they are also content to have their bodies a little bit less touching all the time, although now Miss Navy is going to make a liar out of me and go sit right on top of her brother there. But whereas the whole litter would have been like this last week, now they're quite okay with having their own personal space. And they're starting to explore that so that they are becoming a little bit more independent. So that's just one of the signs that the puppies are maturing, they're growing up, and these are the things that we want to see happening in the puppies. We want them to become independent, and we want them to have the confidence that they feel that they are okay to be lying on their own, such as yellow collar is here. Um, same with light blue, she's, she's close to gray, but she's not actually physically touching him. Whereas gray is knighting Miss Navy Blue collar there. And even green, he's, he moved away from uh, Navy collar girl there when she tried to get on top of him. This is actually a really good chance to see how his color is coming in. It's really hard for me to show it to you when I'm holding him, but you'll see he actually has quite a bit of color here and this spot is growing and I believe there's going to be color down here. If this all comes in as it looks like it's going to, then indeed he will not be an extreme party. He will just be a party because uh, an extreme party has to be 95% of the body will be white. So you only get very small patches such as on the ear and sometimes at the base of the tail. But if he's going to have markings on his back like that, that are more than just a very small spot, then he is actually going to be a party as well. But you can see he's quite different from uh, navy blue collar here who is a much darker shade in her party markings and you can still see actually some of the sable on her markings there which is around the outside of her body and still has those dark chocolate colorations. So that's our video for today. I hope you really enjoyed seeing all the puppies and learning a little bit more about what is going on when you're a three week old Labradoodle puppy. Next week, as I said, we may have some crusty puppies with some orange highlights if they start eating out of their pan a fair bit. So we may even have moved them into the doodle den. So our ne next video, maybe uh, they'll be out of the nursery. Maybe we'll have them in there still. We'll just wait and see. And Ripple will probably be quite happy to be announcing next week that she started the weaning process a little bit more seriously and that she's back sleeping in bed with her mom. If you have any questions or any comments, please feel free to ask and leave your comments below this video here. I always love talking about Labradoodles and happy to answer any of your questions. And if you have a minute and you did enjoy this video, give us a thumbs up. We'd really appreciate that. And if you'd like to, subscribe to our channel so that you get all of our updates, which will include updates for all of our litters and also our educational videos. And thanks so much for watching today.